Hello, my name is Javier Cañada and today I will be presenting on the efficiency-based exploration of external hypotension structures. I will first do a brief introduction to external hypotension structures, followed by a short description of the methodology of this work, and then I will comment on the design constraints and efficiency-based exploration for these structures. External post-tensioning allows obtaining more efficient distributions of bending moments, for instance, by introducing intermediate supports in the structure, as shown on the image on the left. It also allows exploring innovative geometries. These require an evaluation of their performance and they need to be compatible with usual design constraints, as shown on the figure on the right. The methodology of this study is based on the work on funicular externally post-tensioned curved structures by Todisco. Todisco developed a method based on graphic statics to obtain the layout and forces of a post-tensioning system capable of cancelling the bending moments happening in a planar curved structure under permanent loads. The method can also be applied to structures that remain straight in elevation. The solution space for externally post-tensioned structures can be explored parametrically. For curved structures, Todisco showed that two parameters can be chosen freely. In this work, those two parameters are the eccentricity of the post-tensioning system at mid-span and the magnitude of the horizontal reaction. For straight structures, only one parameter remains available, in this case, the eccentricity. In addition to these two parameters, in this work, the orientation of the struts joining the post-tensioning system and the compression short has also been freed, greatly extending the domain of solutions attainable. The methodology based on graphic statics ensures that all solutions always remain in equilibrium. However, more constraints can be applied through the form and forces diagrams to find those configurations with higher structural interest. For instance, it needs to be imposed on the design that the post-tensioning system remains in tension and the compression short in compression. To achieve that, a domain can be defined for each point in the force diagram that ensures that the elements of the structure remain either in tension or compression. Another constraint that can be imposed on the design is to maintain a constant tension force throughout the post-tensioning system. This can be achieved by making the vectors in the force diagram representing the forces in the post-tensioning system to be the radii of a circumference centered at the pole of the funicular construction. It is also possible to find configurations in which the horizontal reactions at the supports are cancelled. These configurations require the post-tensioning system to be placed below the compression short. Finally, Modifying the orientation of the struts, it is possible to cancel the forces in a certain number of them, which would eventually allow to eliminate these struts from the structure. Passing on to the efficiency-based exploration, to be able to compare the performance of different structural configurations, the first approach adopted in this work is based on the structural load path, which can be easily evaluated using the graphic statics construction. The structural load path has been used to evaluate the variation of the performance with the eccentricity of the post-tensioning system and the value of the horizontal reaction when a certain configuration of the struts is chosen. In the case of the slide, it is the orientation of the struts that allows obtaining a constant tension force in the post-tensioning system. The results show that the minimum values of the structural path are obtained when the post-tensioning system intersects the compression short, as shown on the figure. Nevertheless, more configurations can be attained when the orientation of the struts connecting the compression short and the post-tensioning system is freed. The figure on the slide shows the variation of the load path with the eccentricity for different values of the horizontal reaction when the orientation of the struts is chosen to minimize the structural load path. It can be seen that when the post-tensioning system is completely below the compression short, the optimal configurations correspond to a degenerated case in which all struts converge to a single point. It is also observed that in all cases, the load path decreases as the eccentricity increases. The previous slide showed only symmetric configurations, but if the orientation of the struts is left completely free, more configurations, less predictable, and with similar levels of performance evaluated through the structural load path can be found. The evaluation of the load path can also be used to find optimal solutions, when the discretization of the structure is finer or when different geometries of the compression short are adopted. However, the load path only provides information on the efficiency of the structure under permanent loads. It is also interesting to analyze the structural efficiency under live loads. This can be done with the moment-based or strain energy-based efficiencies. 
The figure on the slide shows the efficiency of an 80 meter span arch under a point load and mid span. The trends observed are similar to those obtained with load path and the optimal configurations only differ slightly. Trends are also similar between the different definitions of the efficiency when the struts are oriented to achieve maximum efficiency. There are only slight variations in the geometry of the optimal configurations for different definitions of the efficiency and locations of the loads. Finally, for more complex asymmetrical structures, the optimizations based on the load path and the strain energy-based efficiency still provide similar results as seen on the top row. However, the moment-based efficiency generates different geometries, depending on the location of the external loads. To conclude, this work has continued developing on the potential of external post-tensional to generate material efficient structures by reducing the bending moments in them. Its application to curve the structures has been extended by exploring a wide range of solutions. Moreover, the constraints that need to be imposed to find those configurations with the highest structural interest have been analyzed. Finally, studying the performance of these structures with the aid of the structural load path and the moment and energy-based efficiencies has allowed to identify potentially interesting configurations that deviate from the most conventional solutions for externally post structures. Thank you very much.